Hello, you join me in my workshop. I don't know if you're the same as me, but I always wanted a TV in my back garden. And I thought the best way to do it is make a cabinet to put it in, make it waterproof as possible. Now I decided to make it last year when COVID struck and it was locked down in the UK. So I thought the perfect timing, the weather was good to watch movies outside, etc. Now I filmed most of it. There's some bits I missed out, um, but got the majority of it. And that's what I'm about to show now. Um, it was restrictive on what materials I could get because the DIY stores were shut. And so I had to use the materials I already had. And uh, it's okay. It, it, it's uh, lasted now or 18 months and it's still going strong. So I'll show you the video now. Um, but before I do, uh, I didn't film the first step, which was to put in a beam going across. So I'll show you what I did first and then I'll go straight into the video. Okay, so sorry for the crudity of this drawing, but um, I hope you get the general idea. Um, so here's my shed, there's my fence, there's a bush above it, and then I had a small decking area in the corner. And um, obviously there's a fence post there, fence post there, and then there's the upright strut, which makes the framework of the shed. So I wanted to anchor a um, piece of timber across from there to there, which I did. And then I put an extra piece in from there to there. Now the video starts with making this side panel here. And then hopefully the rest is self-explanatory, but we'll see, see what your thoughts are. Any questions, please put them in the comments below. Thumbs up would be great. And uh, if I've got a photo, I'm sure I have, I'll put a photo up now of the uh, area before I started building. Okay, so I did a lot of uh, offcuts from some blind shutters that I made in my house. And I thought these were coming handy for the side panels for the TV cabinet. So there's me uh, cutting them size and now gluing them into place. And then gluing down either side for some battens to give them support. So screw in the top braces to make the frame. And there's one in place. Glued and drilled. And again, I made this out of materials that I had at hand. It was locked down, COVID locked down, and so none of the stores were open. So it was a bit of um, um, mixed together and made do. As it will become clear shortly. So I made some struts or battens across the top there to give it rigidity. And I'm making this uh, ad hoc. Um, so uh, I'm not working to plans as such. So I'm just test fitting the hinges there with some trim that I got. And then good old OSB, nine mil thick. I had a sheet of this um, spare. So I thought this will do. Not the ideal material, but uh, I tried to make it look a bit nicer by putting some grooves in there to give it a tongue and groove effect, which will come later in the video. So there's the back piece cut out. And if you notice, there's a, a triangle missing off the top. That was because of the width of the panels was four feet and uh, it was just over but it worked in my advantage because i needed ventilation at the top of the cabinet anyway for the tv so i'd already pre-nailed the back panel this is me standing at the back behind it now with limited space <laughs> and then put a couple of screws in first of all to hold it in place and then nailed it to the uh, to the rest of the carcass and then glued it as well Now in hindsight, yeah, I should have put built this on a bench or in the in the workshop, but uh, it was a it was some nice weather, so I thought, well, why not? So now what I'm doing is cutting out uh, a piece for the front doors.
I made the doors in one piece and like I say I wanted to put some grooves down there to make a tongue groove effect so uh, marked it up and then use a tapered router bit like a v-shaped router coming out from the end of the plate by probably around three or four mil and then uh, put the lines in to give it that, that effect and that's one side done and decided to do the other side as well when the doors are open but I didn't do it in line with the other lines I wanted to offset it slightly um, I thought if I did them in line it might weaken the doors so I set it off by I don't know, about 10 mil and there's me doing the back of the doors Okay, so that's the panel done. So next to cut it down the middle to make the two doors left and right. And then marked it up to cut through. Just to say as well, I, I mentioned in other videos, I'm not an expert, this is just my hobby. This is something I did at home. So if you need any advice, just always get the expert advice first, especially when you get onto electrics. So there's the doors cut, just ready to be trimmed up. There's the trim I'm using, cut into size. There's all the trim for the doors. But I started uh, trimming up the carcass first, the cabinet around the outside. So use this dado rail. I got this from a DIY store, I think they cost me about £1.50 a length, something like that, eight foot length. They're clearing them out. They're not the ideal thing to use outdoors, of course, but a, uh, they're well protected from the elements. As I made the roof with an overhang. And then I also coated it in uh, outdoor paint. So next, the trim on the doors, glued and tacked. At this point, I forgot to put the uh, <laughs> the hinges in. I wanted to hide them underneath the trim, so uh, crudely cut out um, like a recess for, for to, to cover the the hinges. There they are, in place, nicely hidden. And then I put a batten on the back of the door as well, just for the screws to give it extra support. That's one of the doors fitted. The other one on next. These do look a lot better when they're painted, by the way. So next onto the roof and uh, I cut out two triangles to, to form the apex again with the OSB. Um, one of the triangles is to support the front edge of the roof and the back one goes behind the back panel uh, of the cabinet uh, just to give it that ventilation that I was after. It'll become clear shortly. And then I took a, a slither off the top of the apex of the roof just so when the felt goes over it doesn't scuff or catch and tear. So that's it in place, glued and tacked. And then I mismeasured this bit here. <laughs> so I took a chunk out of the roof just so it didn't hit the uh, shed. But it, it still, water still runs off well. Okay, so you can see now where the ventilation is to go out the back of the cabinet. Next, I started marking up for the front panel above the doors, triangular piece, triangular piece. And uh, yeah, I did the same again with like the tongue groove effect with the router. If you like this video, if it's uh, been informative for you or you've got something from it, <laughs> you might not, but you might, um, please give it a thumbs up. And I say, if you've got any questions, please put them in the comments below. 
or any thoughts or uh, have you done a similar project to this again i'm not an expert but i'll, uh, I'll answer where i can the next part was to cut out two holes in this triangular section just to give it more ventilation i had the drill out anyway because i had to put some holes in the base i thought for the minute it takes to put them in there it, it, it can't do no harm just to give it a bit more ventilation so I've cut the, the triangular piece for the uh, above the doors and uh, yeah, just put the grooves in there now with the router. And then just glued around the outside and then popped it into place. Tacked it as well from the outside. So there's a lot of footage that uh, I didn't get actually, but um, you get the idea, I hope. <laughs> so there you can see inside how the ventilation works. I actually braced the back of the, the cabinet as well to the main shed. I was in fear of it toppling over. And later on in the video, you'll see where I've put a, a, a central support as well. So there's the base of the cabinet glued and tacked into place and then I put uh, two holes one either side one for the or for electrics to come through another side just to give it more ventilation actually and then I put a mesh over the holes when I fed the cables through and I put a mesh above as well just to stop birds bees insects whatever getting in there and then next I sealed it just to keep get it as uh, watertight as I could and just to say, this was 18 months ago I made this and um, I've had no leaks in there, no damp. But what I do each year is take the TV out at winter. Um, yeah, I don't want to risk it just in case. But you can see the overlap of the roof there as well, just to give it extra protection from the, from the elements. There's the panel, we're about halfway there here. And there it is painted up, or well, the first coat. And next to paint the inside, and I painted it black just to blend in with the TV. The paint I used as well for this, this cabinet um, was a, an outdoor paint, like a garden paint. It's not my paint of choice, but I didn't have any available of the stuff I normally use on my shed, which is actually made by Johnston's. Um, it's called Natural Vanilla, like a garden paint, uh, garden fence paint. And um, it looks okay, it's more of a white finish, but um, it took probably around three three coats, with this cabinet. But I think probably next year I may repaint it again, the same color as the shed. There's me felt in the roof. And if you're interested in all, I've got some more videos on my channel uh, doing a tour of my shed. I've got a, um, a bar kitchen as well shed um, and uh, my workshop, man cave. And uh, yeah, I've got a few tours on there. Plus all the little projects I've done around the garden and in my uh, shed workshop. So there's the mesh and uh, here's the electric supply coming in. Again, always get electrical advice if you're unsure on anything. Um, this is my garden, so uh, my house, and uh, I'm happy with it, but um, it's always worth getting advice if you're not sure. That's one of the HDMI leads um, that I brought in. I actually put two in there, one for the laptop, so that wires straight into the shed in my laptop, and then another one goes into a PlayStation. So I can play PlayStation outside as well. So that's it all painted up, put a clock in place, and um, put some fairy lights around it. Put the trim on the apex of the roof as well. Painted that up. And then next was the hardware. So a couple of handles, one on each door, a Haskin staple to put a padlock through. And then either side, I put some cabin hooks to hold the doors back for when you're watching TV. And um, yeah, it, it, it holds back well. And there's the TV in place. And I put it in such a position where that can be lifted out relatively easy for in winter or whenever. And next was to make the center support and uh, I've made a pond underneath it as well, which will come later. And uh, the electrics run into that, this cabinet as well. Just to say, I always disconnect the, the power from my main shed to this cabinet whenever I'm not using it. So 
There it is. So I wanted to make a pond and then I got this cattle water feeder and uh, got it from an old uh, antique type shop. It cost me around £10 I think it was. Uh, it's got a brass fitting um, connector on there. Cleaned it all with a wire brush. And then uh, my plan was to set the pump into the pond, put the pipe leading to that top brass valve and then holding open the valve on the tap to make sure that so the water was constant when the pump was on. You can just see me there, just, just trialing it out in the workshop. There we go. Um, put an extra pipe in the middle, to give that hose pipe some support and then glue gunned around the outside. In fact, did I use, yeah, I must have used glue gun. And then a um, pump as well there. So there's the support in place and some diagonal struts to hold it upright and just give it a more of a, uh, make it more aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> and uh, just test fit in the pump. I actually put another um, batten behind that just to bring it out a bit further. Now there's a hole where the hose pipe feeds through, then round the back of that support, back through another hole into the pond where the pump sits. Um, yeah, and the, that's it painted up. Well, first coat anyway. There's the hole at the bottom, so the pipe comes through there into the pump, sucks up into the uh, water feeder and then trickles over the edge. So there's me wedging the valve open. And uh, so put a pond liner in there, filled it up, water, and then tacked and trimmed it into place. I actually put stones at the bottom of the pond and some rockery I'm just bry wax some uh, trim to go around the top. And there it is. I grooved out some little notches there to make the water tr trickle better. And uh, it was actually trickling right underneath the, the trough. So I put some little pieces of chain on the outside as well. So it dribbled down. It's more of a trickling sound. Well, there it is now, look. So that's it, pretty much done. Um, I put a uh, LED light in, a waterproof LED light in the pond as well. It changes colour, um, operating it from a remote control and the pump as well on a remote control. Um, I painted up that, that sort of decking area as well in, in white paint. Don't ever use white paper. When it rains, it just washes up. Well, it didn't wash off. It just broke up over time. I want to redo it with a different colour now. And uh, so it soaks into the the timber a lot better so there's the lights all lit up and that changes color so yeah that's pretty much it i hope you enjoyed the video uh, you might have got something out of it you might not but if you did just please give it a thumbs up ask me any questions subscribe for future videos and uh yeah thanks for watching if you've got this far <laughs> See you in the next video. Cheers.